uh, part 2 then says to state why f of x doesn't have an inverse. It doesn't have an inverse because it's not a one-to-one -one function. You can see here that if I draw a straight line across um, the function, we have two um, identical outputs for two different inputs. So this is an example of a many-to-one function and you can't have an inverse with a many to one function. You can only have inverses for one to one functions. So that's the reason why it hasn't got an inverse. So f doesn't have an inverse because it isn't a one-to-one -one function. So g of x, to find the inverse of g of x, what I do is I write y instead of g of x. I find, um, I rearrange this so x is the subject. So that's going to give me 5x is y plus 4a. And so x is y plus 4a all over 5. And then instead of writing x, once x is the subject, instead of writing x, we're going to write the inverse function. So f dash x, sorry, f minus 1 of x. And where we've got y, we're going to put x back in place. So a fifth of x plus 4a for the inverse function.